We live in a multi-dimensional world, each organism dependent on its individual level of consciousness apprehends a dimension of space extracted from time. Yes, Ben? So the assumption is we have to separate ourselves from the lesser dimensions of other organisms. Not quite. Uh, our world encompasses theirs, although they are unable to apprehend our wider reality. Take the simple consciousness of an organism, like a snail, for example. Now, they're unaware of the past or the future, living only in the present, driven merely by sensation. What about the dog? They're conscious of the past, remembering where they buried a bone. Yes, good. Uh, by virtue of their higher mental faculty and simple consciousness, a dog can mentally extract from time another dimension of space, and so it lives in a world larger than that of the snails. And us? We humans with self-consciousness live in a world of three dimensions, of space plus time. But perhaps there is a larger world still that includes ours as ours includes the others, and so it continues. So we live in a world unaware of a kind of broader existence. Exactly. We live in a multi-dimensional universe, but are conscious of ourselves only in a three-dimensional world. We live in a real physical world, but perhaps we don't know it nearly as well as we think. In fact, we may scarcely know it at all. It has been said throughout time that man has sought to enter this astral dimension by means of expanding his consciousness, be it through uh, an out-of-body experience or meditation or the use of psychoactive substances. So, this week's assignment, is there still a higher realm, one that we cannot yet comprehend? A, a, a thousand word minimum, please. Collect them from Karina as you make your way out. Thank you. So, you're saying with increased awareness, we can actually see into this astral world. Uh, there's a, a lot of research to support it, yes. Seems a bit far-fetched. I don't know. I think the idea of another dimension we can't see seems feasible. It's more than feasible. There's plenty of esoteric literature on it. What if we could access it, like find a way into that world? There is a theory called astral projection. Through it, it's thought you can detach your spirit from your physical body and enter into another plane of existence. But it's a pretty out there theory. Perhaps you would each be best focusing your attention on actual science. Do you think it's actually possible then? Theoretically, yes. Thank you, Corinne. There are examples of a clairvoyance using it to contact the dead, but I guess that's where it gets a little more uh, abstract. Really? Well, yeah, like any discipline, it requires training, or at least some basic knowledge. Or perhaps the science of it would be a good place to start your research for this week, then. But I'll leave that to each of you. See you all next week. Gareth, your coffee. Thank you, Miss Richardson. Thanks for adding more work, Alex. So, have you read about this, then, Leaf? Astral projection? Yeah. I stumbled across a little on YouTube. <sighs> no, people that claim to astral project, they experience exactly the same sensations as someone, as a jet pilot suffering from G-lock. You can't be that narrow-minded. I don't know. Mind's a powerful thing. I'm sure with a few cognitive tricks, anyone could be entertained by the darkest corners of their subconscious. Besides, if you want to go believing everything you see on YouTube, why stop at astral projection? I'm pretty sure there are literally pages dedicated to proving that ghosts and the mermaid and boogeymen are real. And then you can chase the Mad Hatter. I'm sticking with psychoactive substances for my research. I wasn't sitting there watching it all night. Oh, so what else caught your attention? Whatever it was, it won't be as disgusting as the film you undoubtedly watched. So you do spy on me. <laughs>
Never thought I'd see the day I'd find you in here late. <laughs> yeah, that makes two of us. Interesting collection. And what's it for? A bit in-depth, aren't they? Well, I guess if we don't challenge ourselves now, we never will. Glad to see you're finally taking it seriously. Psst. Hey, Alex. You ready? Uh, that's my cue. Um, the sun sets late tonight. Do you want to come and hang with us at the quad? Uh, no, I, I just want to get this finished. But you go. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then, I guess. Good night. Good night. I haven't even seen the first. Oh, I see. Better. You're up early. Yeah, I know. Got an early night. I tried that astral projection thing. It's useless. Really? There's a surprise? Yeah, absolutely nothing. Bloody useless. What would you? I wouldn't trust anything she says. Should I be looking for Bigfoot next? <sighs> I don't know. I don't think you should be messing around with that. Doesn't matter. I don't think I was doing it right anyway. I was so tired, I just sort of fell asleep. <laughs> How are you tired? All you ever seem to do is sleep. Well, library session took its time. You read about it and still couldn't figure it out. Sounds about right. Oh, so that's what the books are about. Yeah, yeah. It's quite interested, though. Just thought I'd give it a go. Interest? It's not like obsession, things you don't even research for classes. <laughs> well, whatever it is, I'm clearly useless at it. Oh, well, <sighs> when in Rome. Yeah. Do as Romans did. Okay. When you're in Rome, you talk to Caesar. Yeah, you're retired. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Powell, dumbass. <laughs> He's the one that suggested it. 
Despite the awful misuse of that analogy, it's actually not a bad idea. I'm full of good ideas, obviously. Mr. Harmon, what can I do for you? Um, I've been doing some reading on astral projections, and I was just wondering if maybe you could help me to understand it a bit better. If you have time. Uh, okay, what exactly did you want to know? Well, I was thinking about attempting it. Um, but I want to know... I don't know, I just want to know more about it first. Have you tried YouTube? Actually, I did try YouTube, yes, that was interesting, uh, to say the least. But, um, I don't know, I, I just don't know where to start. Right. Where'd you get your reading material? Uh, so, I spent a few hours in the library last night, just going through some reference books. Oh, yeah, they're a good place to start, but the majority are probably outdated. I've been asking the university to reinvest in more material, but, uh... Apparently, funding's limited for the pseudosciences. Can I ask why exactly you want to try it? And to be honest, it's something I think you should be careful with. Besides, the university aren't exactly advocates of that sort of thing. Well, it's just that since we're working on consciousness, I just want a more practical understanding of our spirits. Well, oh. that's how I started on this journey. It's, it's a passion for growth. I'm far from bursting it, but I have tried it, although that was a long time ago. Really? I was fascinated with it. It's, it's a wonderful tool, but we need to learn a lot more about it. It's not an exact science. The idea of astral travel is rooted in most worldwide religious accounts of the afterlife where they describe the soul's journey as an out-of-body experience. The idea is that the spiritual traveler leaves their physical body and travels in their astral body uh, through higher realms. So when people say they've seen a ghost, that's just like a glimpse into another parallel reality? Yeah, sort of, but, but it's, it's more complicated than that. You know, things like UFOs, uh, abductions, uh, psychic phenomena can't uh, simply happen in the three-dimensional world that we know, and yet they do, right? So those that don't understand that are quick to label them as paranormal, but normality is just an individual's interpretation of reality. So astral projection allows you to contact spirits who aren't in our world? Amongst other things, possibly. You don't think so? I never came into contact with any myself, but I, I certainly wouldn't rule out the possibility. I did read a great book about religious spirituality and our ability to connect with it. The author actually used to lecture here, but uh, budget cuts relieved her too. What was her name? Uh, Michelle Collins. It's definitely the sort of thing I think you're looking for. But with your attempts, I, I can't really tell you how to do it. I can only describe how I did it. And that's not to say it would even work for you. No, of course, but just any help would be great. Finally, a decent house party tonight. You lads up for it? Come on, bro. You? Sure. Are we keeping you from something? Just emails. Yeah, that doesn't even How about you two? How about us two what? How far are you now? <laughs> Without a doubt, I'm in. Alex, are you going? Um, sorry, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it tonight, but I'll talk to you later, OK? Is up with him? Maybe found himself a girl. Well, I'm definitely up for tonight. Good. It's a date, then. <laughs> you wish. Right. Yeah. No, I don't care, but this is because of what you did. You had an opportunity to say something and you never did. 
Right, but you've only started with all of this now in an attempt to fix things. Look, Dad. Okay, okay, okay. Look, all right, you've said your piece. No, I never said it was your fault. But listen, you're supposed to be the one person I can come to about everything. And the fact that you've hidden it from me for so long is what hurts the most. No, 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 it's simple. She's dead. Yeah, and you've left me to deal with that on my own. No, that choice was yours. Do you know what? I'm done. Twenty-one seems a bit late for all this, Dad. It adds a lot of questions. A lot of questions. You know, maybe I'd, I'd have understood how you felt, but it just feels like you've left me out of everything. so young. I didn't know when to tell you. You can't. You can't do this. Not now. Look at it. No, no, no. I just you, you want waited to... way too long for this. You can't do this to me now because you're only doing it to try and fix things. Thought things were getting better. This is all I really have to give you.
you want to do this? The first thing you need to do is find somewhere comfortable. But you don't want to be tired. You need to lay on your back and rest your eyes. You will get urges to move. Ignore them. Concentrate on your breathing. You are tricking the brain to think that the body is dreaming. This activates body paralysis, uh, a transitional state between wakefulness and sleep. But when this happens, you can separate from your paralyzed physical body. And undertaking this, I, I always choose to consider the following verses. I am at total peace. I am connected to all that exists. I am empowered to, to travel, travel wherever, wherever I wish to go. Wish to go. <sighs> I will be protected mentally, physically and spiritually. I'm um, sorry, I, I ended up crashing early again. She's getting up now. I've got some news. I've seen a bit. No. No, you guys probably won't believe me anyway. Okay. I did it. I swear, I can actually see myself out of body. Please don't tell me you're still going on those astral things. Well, there's no need to go on about it because I've perfected it. I'm a genuine projectionist. <laughs> you can't perfect something in a night. Film it. See if you could actually move something in a room. You can't move things. I mean, your physical body vibrates at a different density to your astral body. So you can't affect things from the astral world. Then how is it that a poltergeist can move stuff then? They're not physical. A poltergeist is just a subconscious extension of someone present in the room. They share the same physical characteristics as that person, but do it in an unseen dimension. Although they operate in the same space, your astral body is immaterial and can't have any effect on physical matter. Oh, I thought you already know a little bit about it. Wow. Am I the only sane one here? Okay, let's, let's assume for a moment that there's actually something to this. Why not find a way to prove it? Oh. Spirit's an energy source, right? Okay, then why not use something designed to detect energy, like a, like a weighted pendulum? What's that? It's essentially a body of mass suspended by a piece of string designed to detect resistance. You could use a silk wire that will heighten sensitivity and Give them a little bit of energy and it will swing. Actually, that might work. All you'd have to do is touch the pendulum during an astral projection. Yes. All right, I may know a trick to recording it on your webcam. I could help you set it up, although I expect my cut once it goes viral. Say, 70%? 69? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a pendulum thing? Yeah, I looked it up online. They gave like a basic idea of the design and then I just borrowed a couple of things from the science department. Mm. Looks legit. 
All right, I set the laptop up to record through its own webcam. So literally, just click on it when you want to start, but make sure you turn it off when you're done. That shit eats space. Break a leg. <sighs> I'm just saying, he's been really distant lately. I honestly think you're reading way too much into this. I just want to make sure he's all right. Why don't you just tell him how you feel? <laughs> yeah, great idea. How about this? Hey, Alex, are you going to class? Oh, uh, by the way, I'm, uh, I'm secretly harboring feelings for you. It's a start. <laughs> no. He's got his own problems anyway. Like? Just this argument I overheard. He was having it with his dad. About what? Just their relationship, I think. I've never seen him get so upset before. I didn't even know he lost his mum. How long were you standing there for? Long enough. <laughs> hey, maybe that's what all his obsession is with this astral stuff. Really? Yeah, Professor Powell did say that people actually use it to contact spirits. Maybe he's just genuinely interested in it. <laughs> Please. It's reading. When has he ever been interested in that? <sighs> ever since he started with this damn astral stuff, he's been acting so weird. He barely even texts me back anymore. Just remember, the camera was on. You know, some things are impossible to unsee. Just play. Yeah, go forward.
That's it, stop. Where? That. Go back, stop. Play it from there, watch. That's all it does? Sure, there wasn't a draft. No, I shut the window. A bit early for you guys, isn't it? Hey, you wanted proof? Jordan helped me to record it last night. Just looked through the footage. The pendulum moved. Have a look. Let's see it then. That's it. Wow, that's definitely worth the wait. Thanks, Alec. A bit of a stretch to call it proof, though. No, the pendulum moved. That's ridiculous. Then it doesn't matter what I do. Oi, I swear, I was outside of my body, looking down at myself. I got up. I, I walked past the pendulum. I stuck my arm out to move it. Then... Here. Yeah. More proof. No, I only pushed it once. Wait. No, this was later. I was asleep. Look, I was rolling around. The pendulum shouldn't have moved. Maybe there was a draft? <laughs> That's what Jordan said, but I shut the window. Plus, that debunked the first time. As to attempt number two, time now is 10.46.
see what I mean? That's weird, right? Yeah. So that must be me. Uh, no, it doesn't make any sense. Surely you can't record your own spirit. Well, what else could it be? Yeah, I had a few things to take care of. I'm gonna go to bed. Night. Night. I'm going to bed. And? Good. What happened to you? Nah, it's stupid. I fell off that damn chair this morning, putting something away. It's all bloody fault. I thought there was anyone there. I wasn't here this morning. I had an early lecture. That's weird. What is? Well, I could swear last night I saw something standing in the living area when I went to turn the lights out. Really? Like what? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, it looked like a person, but... When I went to turn the lights back on, there was nothing there. That's it. It's ghosts. It's the only plausible explanation. No, Ben, I'm telling you, something was there.
Why are you two talking in the dark? Yes, please send them through. Just through this way. Dr. Leffler. Hello, Alex. Please call me James. Have a seat. Thanks for seeing me. Um, I really I wasn't sure what to make of your call. I understand from your emails that you've experienced a shadow person. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a little more than a singular experience. I mean, I woke up the other evening, last night, just in the middle of the night. Um, so it, it felt like a dream, but it, it was so real. I, I, I keep seeing things. And now even my flatmates, they're seeing things too. I have to be completely honest with you. I don't usually meet with people this quickly. Why am I different? In a word, that pendant. This? Yes, I've only seen one like it before, coupled with your name. Perhaps I should explain fully. I've spent years trying to better understand these shadow people. I trained some years ago, and the basis of my psychological training was at a facility in Kent. I'd been assigned a patient who had been exhibiting signs of psychosis. I believe that patient was your mother. So you... you treated my mother? You're the reason she came home. You're the reason she was released early. Alex, please understand. Your mother's condition was coupled with these visions. This is unlike anything we'd seen before. This is a joke. I mean, it's got to be a joke. <laughs> what, you expect me to take advice from you, given what you've put my family through? How dare you? Sorry, what... Uh, what, what exactly is it you want from me? Uh, another experiment? Some remorse for what you did? I understand much more now than I did back then. Please know that. I recognize that you're upset, but I may be the only person who can help you now. I believe this is only going to get worse.
Yes, sir. Hey. Hi. What are you doing here? Uh, I, w I was wondering if we could um, have a chat. Yeah. Yeah, come in. Uh, what are you doing? Nothing. I thought I just heard something outside. Really? Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> uh, just some weird things have been happening. Like what? I've been seeing things. Anyway, um, <laughs> yes. What do you want to talk about? Um, I've been wanting to talk to you for a while now. Uh, yeah? About? Alex, I like you. And I don't... Sorry, I've been useless. I've had so much on my mind, I feel like I'm going crazy. You're a big part of my life and I love having you as a friend and I don't want to lose that. I guess that, that just kind of scares me. But that's not going to happen. We have and always will be friends. I hope not. Let's just see what happens. It's new. We'll just see where it goes and then if it becomes uncomfortable or anything, we'll just go back to being friends. This is going to sound crazy, okay? But I swear, there's something in this room. What? There's something in this room. There's something in this room. Yes. Thank you. Please do. Hello, Alex. I'm so glad you came back. Please sit down. 
I need to apologize about yesterday. It just came as a shock. But I understand that you couldn't have known what would happen. Thank you, Alex. I'm sorry for your loss. Hmm. This is very new to me. My father only just told me about everything. I understand. Yeah. Look, I have to be honest. Okay, I wouldn't have come back by choice. It's just that things are getting worse. And I don't know what to do. Does something happen? I'm just... I'm, I'm seeing these shadows more and more often. It, it, it's a plague. And it's affecting those around me. And then yesterday I saw something different. Different? Look, I am not crazy. What do you mean different? Well, it was just a different shape from the others. It was like a human, but the head of a ram. Alex, if this is spiritual, then I'm afraid there isn't much more I can do for you. No, 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 you said. I know what I said. You said. I know what I said. <laughs> Things are more complicated now. Listen, I need to do something. There's nothing I'd be able to do. I don't know enough about it. Okay, well, what the hell do I do? You need to find someone who understands this. As a professional, I've always remained skeptical, but it would seem that these shadow people have something of an historical occurrence. I guess your attempt at astral projection may have opened a gateway that was perhaps otherwise meant to stay shut. He said there was nothing he can do. So what the hell do I do now? Well, is there nothing we can do? That clairvoyant. How is that going to help? Well, maybe if I can figure out what it is, you know, I'll know how to get rid of it. Which of you would like to go first? Me, I'd like to, please. Please bless these cards and surround us with love and light. First off, if you can shuffle the cards in any way you wish. And place the pack face down in the centre of the table. Now, if you can cut the pack at any point you wish. Thank you. I'm now going to lift three cards which will be relevant only to you. I would explain the meaning on each one as they turn and their relationship to each other. The Hanged Man. This card signifies change, sacrifice and abandonment. It's about letting go of your past to reveal a new spiritual beginning. Tower. 
This card reveals a sudden change coming. Abandonment of the past and unexpected events. You brought something here with you. Michelle, your, your book has stated a section on banishing spirits with a case study. I wish I'd never written it. That case study is the reason I don't do it anymore. I, I need your help. No, look, please, leave. Let's just go. Thank you for your time. Let's go, Alex. Trust me, that was not me. I need you to sit down. I've never done a reading like this before. These cards represent a very dark change in your life. There are spirits surrounding you looking for a way in. You saw them? Yes. And our only choice is to banish them. There is one more powerful than the others. It seeks only destruction and it won't stop until it gets what it wants. We need its name. Why? Most religions have names for them. The Bible refers to them as demons, spirits, and fallen angels, though I use the term loosely. We need to find its name to understand its weaknesses. This can't be. You can't affect things from the astral realm. You attempted astral projection. Yeah, I, I only wanted to look into that world to find my mum. Alex, your mother is not here now. But something else is. And it's looking to break you down and it's getting stronger and more powerful. It's feeding on your fear. Stay here. The Quran referred to these spirits as jinn, a spirit from an unseen dimension. Alex, you'll have to do as you did before. Project? Yes. No. No, 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 no. No, that's what started this. It's going to make it worse. No, it won't. No, I can't. I... Alex, please trust me. It won't make it worse. No. Alex, listen to me. It's power. Please listen to me. It's I power. Can't. I can't. It's power is that it can affect this world. But it is not stronger than you in its world. You have to cross over and demand its name. With that, we can cast it out. So we're supposed to just sit here and watch? Yes, but we can combine our energies. Alex? I need you to stare into the candle. It's okay. Stare into the candle. Consider your thoughts and focus your energy into the flame. The light of God surround us. The love of God enfolds us. May the presence of God watch over us. The power of God protects us. 
Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. Let's begin. Don't believe everything you are about to see. Follow my lead and focus yourself on positive thoughts. Place your finger on the planchette. We acknowledge your presence. Tell us your name. Alex, demand its name. Alex! It's all right. I demand you, give us your name. Dad? Alex. Um, someone I want you to meet. Hello, Mr. Harmon. I'm Melissa. Please, call me Joe. And it's a pleasure to meet you. Come in. Okay. 